In this interview, I will be talking with Jim Blair and Jesse Keating about Zool. Can you start by just introducing yourselves and uh, you know, telling us what what projects you work on, either just Zool or, or if things in, in peripheral to that? Sure. Um, uh, I'm Jim, and uh, I've been working with the OpenStack project for several years now. Um, and I was one of the founding members of the project infrastructure team. And as, as part of our work helping the project grow over time, uh, we developed uh, this program called Zool that we're here to talk about. Uh, I'm Jesse, and I've also been in the OpenStack community for a number of years. Uh, I started off as an operator, uh, helping to do deployments of OpenStack for a very large public cloud. Uh, in that capacity, I also uh, discovered and fell in love with Ansible and have contributed a lot around Ansible, particular Ansible in the OpenStack community. Um, and that has kind of led me over the years to become involved in Zool as uh, Zool started moving towards using those types of things as well. Uh, these days, uh, I'm less involved in OpenStack in general, but more specifically involved in, in Zool and, and with being able to uh, use Zool with uh, alternative platforms to what OpenStack is using. So Zool was born in OpenStack, but like you say, is now used by other communities. Let, let's start by, what's Zool? Sure. Uh, so Zool is a, is a CI system uh, and is growing into a, a, a continuous deployment uh, system as well. Um, we developed it for OpenStack to deal specifically with the, uh, the large number of interrelated projects that OpenStack has. So we have uh, a lot of projects that are all changing all the time. Uh, changes in one project might uh, affect another or might require changes in another in order to be effective. Uh, and Zool helps with the testing uh, of all of those by, uh, by allowing developers to, to, uh, to sort of express uh, the relationship between changes in multiple projects. Make sure everything is tested together uh, the way that it's that it's going to uh, to end up in the tree before it actually lands. A, a central aspect of Zool is what we call project gating, which is when uh, uh, where we uh, there there is no individual person in in uh, any of the OpenStack projects that that has the authority to just push a change into Git. Um, all of the changes have to go through Zool. They have to be tested and pass their tests before they can land in the repository. Uh, and uh, Zool does that for us and, and helps us out there. So uh, Zool started out um, uh, very much tailored to, uh, to OpenStack's problem space as well as uh, it, uh, our development environment and our tooling. So um, it, it started out talking to, directly to to Garrett, our code review system, um, and, uh, and uh, since then we've uh, evolved it um, to to talk to other systems and to, to run um, uh, to run the actual job content uh, using using new technology. Yeah, I, I think to, to build onto that, um, in one of my roles, we were. Uh, developing our own OpenStack product. And we had many changes that had to live on top of OpenStack. And, and our developers wanted a way to maintain those changes and work with those changes as close to upstream OpenStack as possible. And in that frame of mind, we developed what's called a third-party CI, a, a, uh, a duplicate of the OpenStack infrastructure CI system. So that included our own, our own Garrett, our own uh, um, our own test running infrastructure in, in our own Zool. And we set all that up and had our developers using that, validating their changes, getting reviews and sign offs and having their changes pass all the tests, uh, which allowed a, a greater sense of confidence in the code that we are writing uh, and a greater sense of confidence in our product. Um, as we exposed more and more of our developers to this way of developing software, uh, it became very clear that <laughs> it became very clear that this 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 development style this uh, 
having a gating system that not only prevented the changes from going in until they passed the tests, but it would also allow you to set up dependencies between multiple changes and allow maintainers to review large sets of changes, pass judgment on them saying they're good to go, and once all the tests have passed and all the different parts have, have passed, uh, the system would automatically merge that for them. It was a very, very good workflow for a lot of our developers, and they asked us to figure out a way to, to apply this workflow to all the other software projects they were working on, um, which definitely led us towards uh, out making Zool operate on a, on a, in a way that wasn't specifically OpenStack uh, and it wasn't specifically on Garrett, hence um, the new feature of being able to run Zool connected to, to GitHub, uh, one of the more popular uh, source control and review, uh, software review systems in the world. Now, later this week I'm going to be talking with, with Monty about some other communities that are using Zool, and so I won't ask you to talk about that, but uh, when you were abstracting that from OpenStack to this to this larger problem set, what kind of challenges did you encounter there? Uh, so, you know, as as Jim said, Zool grew in in a very constrained, or or at least a very specific environment, and that was OpenStack development. Uh, it was it was on top of Garrett. It was building from previous CI systems in. in uh, iteratively replacing the pain points until eventually there was nothing of the old system left and it was all just Zool. Um, taking that and trying to extract it from the open stackness and from this very specific use case of one very, very large tenant and trying to put it somewhere else where you have many, many, many projects that aren't related to each other and they don't have a, a way of, of sharing job names and project names, and there's a lot of collisions that could happen. Um, that was a difficult thing. Uh, the, the good part of that story is that uh, Jim and the rest of the, the infrastructure team had already started down a path of, of changing how Zool was structured internally and how Zool was put together to better, uh, to better facilitate usage outside of OpenStack. And, and, um, they were in the process of a rewrite around the same time that, that my team wanted to make use of it on something else. And so we had a front row seat to uh, the direction that the rewrite was going. We had an opportunity to provide time, code, and opinions on that rewrite. Um, and uh, I, I believe that because of our experience of trying to, to create this, this more general use, many tenant setup um, helped with the vision and helped with the direction in that rewrite to, to get us to where we are today, where Zool is far better suited for usage outside of that very specific OpenStack world. That's, that's definitely true. Um, uh, and it's been great having uh, the perspectives uh, from you and some of the other contributors uh, uh, as we've been doing this, um, uh, because, you know, in, in in OpenStack, we talk to a lot of people and we see uh, a lot of things, uh, and and we can try to internalize that. But uh, it's it's really good to have folks come to the table and say, "Hey, we're trying to use it this way. Um, uh, we you know we, we need to do this in order for to to do what we want to do." And and, and that's definitely helped to to evolve the uh, um, evolve the project. And um, something something occurred to me while you were talking in, in that. Um, you know, there there are, there are certainly some some differences between you know that, that we that we had to deal with when we added GitHub into the mix, um, you know, into a system that was designed originally for for Garrett. Um, uh, at, at the end of the day, though, it, it sort of continually surprises me the the, the number of similarity similarities. Um, you know, when you get to the point where uh, where you've sufficiently abstracted the the, um, the issue to so that you're dealing with um, a workflow where somebody wants to make a change and you want that to be reviewed and you want it to be tested. Um, uh, that's that's ultimately a very universal concept. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and so, uh, so Zool is sort of, um, uh, it's, we're starting to see it bridge um, uh, communities and workflow styles 
and uh, and, and again, I won't I won't jump too much into uh, what uh, what Monty is likely to talk about later, but um, but we are uh, you know a, a big something that we're very excited about is the fact that, that Zool is uh, is able to to bridge these communities both in a, a technical and a, and a social sense and. And uh, who knows? We may be adding uh, more systems in uh, in the future. If we've, you know, if we have abstracted it this far uh, <laughs> to, to handle these two systems, uh, hopefully uh, we've got ourselves uh, in a good place to add more. Yeah. So. The OpenStack is, is fascinating to me in exactly that regard because more than any other project I've worked with, it's this this confluence of all these seemingly unrelated communities. So it's, it's a really exciting community to, to work with in that respect. Um, we have this this uh, brief moment this week between Queens and Rocky where we take a breath and step back and see what's next. What's next? What are you going to be working on in the coming six months? Um, so uh, we've, uh, we're, we're finishing up the, the version 3 release of Zool right now, which is uh, this, this major rewrite that we've been talking about that adds uh, GitHub support, uh, as well as um, uh, the, the actual job content in Zool uh, is defined in Ansible. Um, those, are, those are sort of the, the two of the, the, the marquee features for, for version three. As we go forward, um, we're looking at integrating more native container use cases uh, into the system, um, uh, finding a, a way to to test uh, both workflows on containers uh, as well as a, a, a very native uh, CI workflow for, uh, for testing container-based projects themselves. Uh, we think that Zool is actually well positioned uh, to, to deal with uh, uh, both of these and, and possibly more uh, container-based use cases. Um, uh, so I think, I think that's the, one of the big things uh, we're, we're looking at. Um, Zool is a fairly scalable system, um, uh, but we're, we're that's looking, an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're looking to, to. There's always a little bit more we can do, uh, so we're, we're going to be looking to, uh, um, to to improve the scale out story uh, a little bit. Um, and, uh, I think that's uh, that's enough to keep us busy for a while. Yeah, uh, it, what Jim says is correct. Um, there's you know, the from, from my perspective as somebody who, who wasn't necessarily in the OpenStack infrastructure community, who wasn't part of the day-to-day -day operation of Zool in that context, you know, we learned quite a lot about operating Zool and we, we brought a fresh approach to it that uh, has led to some of these future plants. Um, the, the, the way that the OpenStack infrastructure runs their Zool, they've got you know, a, a very long history of some very highly capable people uh, keeping that system running and some very mature systems for for deploying and managing and things like that. Um, but coming at it from a, a scrappy little startup within a much larger company, you know, we only had a few people. Um, we, we tried using a new, not, I'm sorry. We approached it with Ansible, a tool that we knew. Uh, and spent a lot of time figuring out exactly how we can deploy it, how small we can deploy it, um, which parts we needed to deploy multiple of, uh, which led to some of the scale out uh, ideas and some of the, the V3 rewrite as well. Um, approaching it, and as we talk about containers, we're also talking about you know, running Zool as a cloud native, container native um, thing, which is a little different than, than how the OpenStack Infra works. And so that's, um, that's leading to some of the, the what Jim is talking about of how how do we how do we auto scale some of the parts that are that are important to scale as a Zool usage grows, um, and then how do we you know the the OpenStack community has the the benefit of having many OpenStack clouds at their disposal uh, for the the actual capacity of running tests. And there there are many uh, organizations that donate a fair amount of capacity for that cause. Um, outside of the OpenStack community, that is one of the, the bigger barriers to Zool being used or, or deployed by people outside of OpenStack is that there's a fairly hard requirement on there being an OpenStack cloud that it can make use of. Um, furthering the, the 
approach to containers and being able to, to perhaps one day say you don't need an OpenStack cloud. You can just point it at a cloud of containers uh, or a, a container orchestration engine uh, and use that as your capacity. That's um, That'll be a pretty fundamental uh, change in, in the requirement set for, for Zool uh, and you know, it's just a fairly fairly large piece of work that will that will have to be done, um, but we couldn't really start on that until we get V three done. What do you wish that the developers on the various OpenStack sub projects knew or did differently when they're interacting with with what you guys do? Um, well, I think the reaction has been uh, very positive so far, and uh, and I'm really actually excited to see what folks have come up with. A big part of what we've done in Zool v3 is decentralize the configuration so that uh, every uh, developers in uh, in all of the individual OpenStack projects can um, can add a little bit of Zool configuration in their own repository. Um, and uh, and in doing that, we've actually seen uh, we've seen some uh, some folks have been really excited about that. And, and I guess the the, the new the new capabilities that brings them. So um, uh, some of the things that, that we've seen are um, uh, because of this decentralized configuration that we have now, uh, we have we have folks that are able to uh, to sort of on their own without uh, involving the, the project infrastructure team, uh, they've, they've started um, uh, uploading Docker images to Docker Hub uh, and things like that. Um, these are these are things that before we'd have to, you know, somebody would have to come to the infrastructure team and we'd have to set up an account and and uh, and build all of this infrastructure before anybody can come in and and uh, and, and do that sort of thing. Um, now folks can can do this on their own uh, and and get things started without us being a bottleneck. Um, now that doesn't mean that, that everybody's on their own <laughs> and and they have to figure out everything out from scratch, uh, but. Because of the way uh, Zool allows sharing of configuration between different projects, um, the the work that folks have, you know, the, the first person that's come along and figured out how to tell Zool to upload uh, an image to Docker Hub, um, the next people can come along and take advantage of that and uh, reuse the same content. So I think um, uh, to, to sort of more directly answer your question, uh, um, we're I think the challenge ahead for us is is um, letting people know how much power that they have individually, individually now, um, and uh, you know, how much initiative they can take to do this. But then also keeping that, um, uh, making sure that other people know about it, and, and surfacing that so that other projects can say, "Oh, that's that's something I'm interested in. Let's collaborate on that." Yeah, I would I would uh, echo that that. Um, because the, with V3, configuration is not centralized. Uh, as, as Jim said, each project has the capability of defining their own jobs and their own job content. And as we spoke before, the job content is Ansible, which is you know, it's a fairly um, low barrier of entry to doing some fairly complex things. And so with that, people are now able to experiment on their own with these types of changes. So, you know, Zool is is uh, sort of self-referential. If you make a, a proposed change, or propo propose a change to your test content and to your 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 test, uh, Zool will go ahead and read that and make use of that in testing your change to change the test. And so, you, end users are able to to very quickly experiment with a very fast feedback loop on you know what if I change this test this way? What if I add this test? What if I try this new? Random experiment that that you know, was much much harder before. So uh, users have have an almost infinite amount of power and capability um, to experiment with uh, and to come up with some really amazing things that, that you know, we never would have thought of. But at the same time, you know, if they find something cool, like bubble that up because not only could it be useful to other. Uh, consumers in the OpenStack community, but the way that we're structuring Zool in with shared content is that we can create a, a library of jobs that are 
shared amongst all of the, not just all of OpenStack as one consumer of Zool, but we can actually share these across all the consumers of Zool. So, so my installation of Zool uh, can share job content with OpenStack installation of Zool, and we can, as individual installations, we can also collaborate on making some of that base level job better and providing a, a library of very useful things that can be expressed very simply to, to consumers. Thank you very much for your time, and thanks for all your hard work on Zool. Thank you. Thank you.